So this is where cooking gluten-free gets real. So this is the holy grail of gluten-free cooking as far as my wife's concerned. Today we're gonna make pot stickers. Some people call them gyoza or Chinese dumplings. We're gonna make the flour with a combination of tapioca starch and rice flour. Uh, you wanna make sure you get regular rice flour, not sweet or glutinous rice flour. The filling is gonna be a combination of ground pork, some shredded cabbage, green onions, ginger, garlic, mushrooms. And then we're gonna use a contraption that uh, has been in my family for years. It's uh, a Canadian invention, and uh, it's what you see in front here. It's made by a company called Hunky Bills, and there's a link down in the description bar for this on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive, and it's a great alternative to doing these by hand or using the typical uh, hand pocket or dumpling press that uh, is more common, um, which you can also find on Amazon. We're gonna start by wilting our cabbage. It takes about a half hour, so you're gonna to wanna to do this first. We're gonna take our cabbage and put it in a bowl with a tablespoon and a half of salt and mix this and set it aside. So to begin assembling the filling, we're gonna take our cabbage and remove as much water from it as you possibly can. So once you're done, you should be left with about a cup of pressed and drained cabbage. Wipe out your bowl and we're gonna start assembling the filling. So in a clean bowl, we're gonna start with our pork, then our cabbage, some grated ginger, some grated garlic, our minced scallions, some diced cremini or mini portobello mushrooms, and then we're going to combine this and add our wet ingredients. So to help bind and set the meat mixture that's going to go inside our pot stickers. I've got a couple of beaten eggs and I'm going to add some soy sauce to that and some sesame oil. So we'll mix that up and add it into our meat. So once this is mixed thoroughly we're going to place it into the fridge to cool down while we make our dumpling wrappers. So to make the dough, we're going to start with our rice flour. Our tapioca starch. A pinch of salt. And then we're going to add oil and water that's just come off the boil. So to our flour, starch, and oil, we're gonna add our water that's just come off the boil. And we're gonna stir this until it comes together about the consistency of Play-Doh. Okay, so we're gonna need this for just a couple of minutes to make sure it comes together properly. If you need to add a little bit more flour because it's uh, a scraggly dough, then by all means, go ahead and do that. Okay, so my dough has come together. I'm making a double batch, so I'm gonna separate this into four. One for the top and bottom of each batch. All right, so I've got four equal portions, and I'm gonna roll it out now to fit my press, and then we're gonna start serving up our dumplings. All right, so this is the first tray done. You can see I laid down the dough and used a one teaspoon measure to divvy out the filling. We're now gonna roll out the bottom sheet, lay it on top, and roll it out. All right, so we're gonna take the, the bottom sheet and lay it on top. Okay, and to complete this, you're gonna use your rolling pin and roll over top of this. Make sure your rolling pin is floured so that it doesn't stick. So this is where cooking gluten-free gets real. Um, 
I've seen a couple of blog posts using this dough using the crimp style dumpling press and they appear to have been very successful. This dough just isn't pliable enough for the Hunky Bill's pierogi um, cutters that I have and I'm going to have to give this another try using those types of presses. I did manage to salvage six um, using scraps of the dough and pressing them by hand and I fried these the same way you normally would so on their bottoms with the lid off in the frying pan for a couple of minutes until you just start getting some color and then you toss in some water and lid them up and cook them or steam them for a couple of minutes and I've just pulled them off and um, turned them over um, just to brown the other side a little bit and make sure the tops which are quite thick now um, are cooked all the way through and um, you know they're looking not too bad considering I'm sure they're gonna taste fantastic but definitely not worth the effort with these presses alright so we're gonna go for a taste test now um, definitely the right texture um, they're a good size and uh, I've got just a little bit of sauce here that I put together I have a recipe for the sauce down below too so here we go here's our taste test so what I can say is that the filling is fantastic and the dough got nice and crispy on the bottom it definitely has the right taste and texture um, so as far as that's concerned these are terrific and I'm definitely gonna try them again I think the only fail here though is my Hunky Bill's pierogi presses that I tried to use for making these this dough simply isn't pliable enough um, maybe something with egg in it might have helped get it um, a little more pliable but um, I think I'm gonna have to give these another shot using the um, clamshell style uh, dumpling presses so we'll give it another go so in true home style fashion dinner must go on <laughs> so tonight we're having our gyoza filling over brown rice with a little bit of the dipping sauce and some roasted sesame garlic broccoli.